in the time to join us now. I know we're doing an, another parent workshop on remote learning, but we just wanted to um, spend some time to just provide a bit of training um, on some of the changes that we're going to make. Um, so thank you all for those of you who filled in the parent survey and um, that went out about um, our remote learning offer. Um, it was really, really helpful to, um, to get the responses that we did. Um, we were really pleased um, and very appreciative of some of the comments um, and I've made sure to pass them on to the staff so that they're aware um, and that will be going out um, to all staff for them to kind of have a read um, and just show how appreciated they are because they're all doing such a good job. Um, we also sort of took on board the feedback of what things would be helpful um, moving forward um, whilst we're continuing our remote learning at the moment. And sort of one of the overriding things um, that was fed back to us was the use um, or sort of moving towards having some more live lessons um, for all of the year groups. Um, so that's something that we are going to be doing. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But the main purpose of the um, of the meeting tonight is to talk to you about, about something called OneNote, um, which is the way we're going to be asking children to record their learning. And that's why we're going to have this training this evening, just to make you aware of how what OneNote is and how you can use it to support your child. So if you want to share your screen, then I can just start off. So the live lessons um, that have been requested um, and we're, we're really keen to do it um, feedback from other schools have shown it's working really well and I know the teams calls that and um, the teachers have been doing in the afternoon um, the feedback from parents and from the staff is that the children have done really well engaging in those so we are going to be introducing live lessons as from next Monday um, and that will be for all year groups and what they will be getting is a daily maths, a daily English and a daily reading or phonics session depending on their year group. Um, there will also be every week instead of the teams calls in the afternoon, we won't be having them anymore, but we'll have a class celebration assembly and a catch up um, for all classes on a Friday afternoon. And then we're going to also be introducing a story session um, which will be done in phases. So there'll be one from reception to year two and then one from year three to year six. Um, and that will be members of SLT um, reading class stories and reading novels to the children three times a week as another live session. So we're not going to go too much into all the details um, of the live sessions um, in this meeting tonight. What I will do is send you all a document tomorrow, which will give you all the timings um, for your live sessions. Um, it will give you all the information of how your children are to access the live sessions and also the kind of guidance and expectations and protocols um, for the children and for staff when they're running these live sessions. Um, we will be doing a practice kind of asking children to log on um, on Friday this week um, just to give teachers a chance to talk to the to their classes about how you can um, how they can mute themselves and how they can access the live lessons um, and then we're going to run that from next week um, and it would be really good um, to hear your feedback as to how they're going during the week before half term. But the other change that we're bringing in um, is we're going to be moving away from using the variety of different platforms we've been using for children to um, complete their learning and upload their work at the moment. Um, some of the comments that came um, in the parent feedback had been they liked the consistency in using kind of one platform. Um, and this is also something that CMAT the Trust want to do. And um, for all the Trust, we want to be getting all our remote learning using one platform. And we're going to be using something called OneNote. So teachers have been asked um, to be able to set all their learning from OneNote um, from Thursday this week. And the teachers have had training on this now. Um, and so what we'd like to do this evening is go through what that will look like for you and then how your child will be able to upload their work to OneNote. And um, before we um, get the training on that, I just want to sort of run through why we've decided to do this um, and what the benefits are to using OneNote. So some of you um, may have children who are using OneNote already, particularly if your child's um, in year five, um, particularly with the devices that they would have brought home. And maybe hopefully you'll be able to see the benefits of this already. 
Um, but OneNote allows um, teachers to really easily see the work that your that your children are doing. Um, and most importantly, they can see that in real time. Um, so they can give feedback to your child as they are working um, and also be able to support them um, not only just through written feedback, but OneNote also has the facility um, that, that teachers can record verbal feedback and put that into your child's OneNote. So like the conversation they might have with your child in a classroom when they're working, if they can see your child working in real time, they might then record some feedback for them and, and put that in their OneNote and then your child can listen to that feedback as many times as, as they wish. Um, so it might be them explaining how to do a particular math calculation or maybe they're making some comments on something they've written and we found that that verbal feedback could be really helpful in moving your child's learning forward and just giving them that support that they're obviously not getting at the moment um, compared to being in the classroom. Um, we also um, had positive comments about the fact we'd used a Microsoft Sway in that we had all everybody's learning um, all in one document um, previously, as opposed to having it on different platforms in different areas. Um, and what um, OneNote will allow us to do is to also therefore organise your child's work really clearly into their daily learning, um, so that all the work that they've completed that day will be in one place. So it won't be like when you're uploading um, work to Dojo um, where you might have lots and lots of uploads of really, you know, brilliant pictures um, or images being uploaded and videos. But it's then a bit complicated to be able to see which was done on which day. Um, but this, when we go through it, you'll see really clearly will then track your child's learning throughout the day. Um, and the work that they were receiving in the Sway, they'll get the exact same um, slides that they were receiving in the, slay, in the Sway, but these will now be put into your child's OneNote. And what that allows us to be able to do is your child can then either type their responses right next to the work that's been set. So it's really clear um, for the children to be able to refer straight back to, but also then for teachers to be able to see what responses refer to which bit of learning or which task had been set. Um, if your child is not going to be typing or if they're not in um, one of the classes that has the one to one devices with the stylus, um, they might can continue to do um, their work by hand or they might want to do a variety so they might want to do some on paper and some typed um, and just as you could uh, with Teams and with Dojo you can also upload an image of their work that you've just taken a photograph, or, a photograph of and again you can just upload that um, and put that directly next to the, the task that has been set um, so it'll be clear kind of when we show you this what it actually looks like um, but it does make the sequence of learning a lot more easy to see, which then means that teachers can track um, your child's progress much more clearly because they're able to see day on day what your child's being able to do, what they might need a little bit of support of support with. And it will also allow you as parents to be able to go in and see what they've completed in a day. And then you'll be able to track that progress and have a look at their progress um, throughout the week. Um, which therefore in the kind of longer term, um, or because of this organisational feature of OneNote, allows us to be able to see progress of children over um, a much longer period of time. Um, just as the teachers are able to um, give verbal feedback and record that, the children can as well. So they can um, leave audio notes as well to verbalise their thinking. So if um, any kind of talk tasks have been set, they can record that and put that in their put that in their OneNote um, as well. Or perhaps if it was something they didn't understand, they could do that and record their audio note and put that in their OneNote. Um, the feedback. So I know um, teachers have been responding to um, or giving feedback to things that have been uploaded onto Dojo or for the assignments that have been in Teams have been providing feedback. But obviously this written feedback up to this point has been quite different to the marking and feedback that your child would get in school. So what OneNote allows us to do is to really mimic the marking and the written feedback that your child would be getting in their books if they were in school. Um, so in terms of written work um, or spellings and punctuation, grammar and sort of challenge next step tasks and can be written in. 
Um, and the teachers follow the same marking policy that they use in school. So children are really familiar with this. Um, and you will be able to see um, the marking really clearly. So in OneNote, the teachers will be writing their feedback in green font. Um, so you'll be able to see um, which, because um, if both people are typing, it's quite difficult to see. So you'll be able to see which bits your child has typed, the teacher's responses in the green font. And then what we encourage children to do is then respond to that feedback. And we ask them to do that in purple. Um, so you can then see that response to their marking. So those are the benefits that we sort of we really feel um, are why we are going this way. Um, where we have been using it in year five, we have seen some um, really good examples um, of progress. We've been able to see really good examples of um, teaching marking having impact on learning. Um, and again, really coming back to this, having all the work in one logical place. Um, so I'm just going to ask Mr. Buddy now to do the training for you of just how you access OneNote and how you would um, help your child upload their work and also how um, your, your, the work will look for your child when they receive it on Thursday because it will start to look different to this way. Brilliant, so if I share my screen, um you'll be able to see what I see. So I'll talk you through going through um, Teams um, to get your OneNote up and open. So if I share this. There you are, you should now be able to see my screen. So if you go on to office.com, so if you don't have Teams already downloaded on your computer, um, then you'll need to go on to office.com. You can download that through um, the web browser and I'll show you that in a moment. If your child um, signs in, usually there's a sign in button up here or the little person logo. Um, I'm just going to click sign in. This will just make it quicker for me. Um, and then your child might have a dashboard along the top um, where it'll say Teams or it might be along the side. They keep changing the layout. The Teams is the little blue logo where it looks like there's little people in blue um, and it looks like that with a little T on it. And that will open up your child's team in the browser. Depending on how quick your internet is will depend on how quick it loads. What you'll what you'll find is you'll find um, that your child will have different functions on the side. So they will have a calendar function, um, a Teams function. You, I guess you can just see my screen. And so I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what there is. If I click refresh, typical internet. So there's activity. Here you are. So it it opens up this page and you can get the Windows app so you can download that straight from there or you can just use in web app instead. So I'll just show you using in the web app instead. So on the side you've got activities. So if there's if um, your child's teacher writes on your class team in the morning, um, for example, then there might be um, a little notification which your child might want to check out to find out when the live teaching is, etc. Um, so this is your dashboard. So I'll just talk you through getting into your OneNote and your child will just have their team. Theirs won't be cluttered like mine. Um, so they will click on whichever class they are in. And it will look something like this. Um, each one looks the same on the on an iPad, it looks slightly different if you go through the app and I've done a tutorial and we'll post the links together with this one um, to walk you through if you're using it on an iPhone or an iPad. So you open up your team, then at the top it will say class notebook. If you if you click on that, that will bring you into uh, your child's OneNote. Now the, the OneNote is different through Teams and it's different on the web app and it's also different 
um, to the actual desktop app as well. Each one has its own little features. At school, we use the desktop app and we encourage um, everyone to download that if possible. Uh, but if you can't, then what we would suggest you doing is, um, is to open it up in web browser. So if you do that, if you use it through the browser, you'd do that each time you'd click on class notebook and then hopefully along the top if your internet. Um, allowed you to. If I just click on one of these, maybe it'll. There you are. So if so, what you've got is I'll just show you again because I did that really quick. Um, you'll start on your welcome page. At the side you have your navigation bar, your toolbar, which if you click, it will show you your child's space. So this is what your child will be able to see. They'll see the collaboration space where um, if the teacher wanted your child to work collaboratively with others, um, together with others, they might use that space, but I don't think we'll be using that. The content library, which is where teachers may deposit different information or um, slides that have been annotated during live lessons might go in the content library. Again, your teacher will direct your child where to go for that. And then as you can see, your child will have their space. So it'll be their name, not my name. Um, and there'll be a section called remote learning. Remote learning will be where everything is stored. Um, so I've clicked on remote learning and now I've got all the functionalities along the top. And here where it says open in browser, so if you click on the drop down, you can either open it in browser, which will just bring it up full screen. So if I show you that. So it just um, looks a lot bigger, a lot clearer. You actually have um, a few more functions in the app than you do if you do it through Teams. Um, or you can do it through the app, uh, which we recommend that you do this so um, open in desktop app and then open in OneNote 10 and always allow once you have opened it up into OneNote 10 um, you won't need to go through the app anymore it will uh, into the teams app you should just be able to go onto OneNote and it'll automatically sync so you don't need to keep going through teams that's why we recommend that you get the app so you just cut out um, a load of those steps. So every morning when your child um, goes into this, what will happen is they will have done their work on Tuesday, for example, um, and then your child's teacher will have uploaded for the next day um, underneath, and it will do it in chronological order of when the task is set. So this is what your child's book will look like, your, the notebook for the day. So your Class teacher will have inputted the slides uh, the same as they would for a sway. And as you can see, we've been embedding the videos in from the YouTube links, so they've got all that there. Now, if you fat struggle to read the text, you can zoom in or out by um, if you go to the view button at the top and click on the plus for zooming in, um, then that will zoom in for as long as you want it to zoom in. Or if you've got a touchpad, you can just squeeze the mouse in and out, which will uh, zoom it out and zoom it in. Again, you can do that on an iPad as well. So um, because sometimes the writing might may seem a little bit small. And then what we recommend that you do is then turn it back to 100%. So if, for example, your child wants to then type next to um, the reading activity, they will then click. Um, along the line, they will click 100% um, and what that will do is it just sets the page width. So if ever we were to print these out um, for monitoring purposes, etc., we could then print it all on one page and it doesn't go over and that just types wherever. Um, so wherever you click is where whatever it will type. So you don't need to insert a text box like you would on Word. Um, your child can ju just type. If you type in, if you're typing in different text box though, then they are like little text boxes. Um, so if you're working within English, we just recommend that you just press enter and then that will just start a new line, etc. And it might not match up uh, with the lines, um, 
but the lines are just there for a guide. And if you've got a stylus, we recommend that you use the stylus. So if you have a stylus, then everyone has the functionality to draw. So you would click on draw and we would be using a blue pen. The blue pen is, um, you'll have a load of different pens at the top of yours. Um, you would just click down or you can click add pen and then you would click a blue one. And to save complications, you can just click on the dark blue one. That will work for now. And we usually write with a number two, um, a 0 0.5. But again, that's just for if you're writing with a stylus. If you're not writing with a stylus and your child wants to type, again, they can just click next to it, they can type. And then when they want to um, change it back, so I would suggest at the end of the lesson, for example, they can then move it down to wherever it needs to be. They can stretch it, so dragging where the arrows are. If you drag it to the page width, um, and you can just move it next to the slide. And then once they've done the lesson, then they can highlight the text and they can make it into blue for their writing. So text and blue, just as you would for a Word document. If you want to insert an audio clip, so if your child is reading, so if your child is in um, reception or year one and you want to show uh, reading or your teacher might ask to insert for a reading um, or to explain something verbally rather than just writing it down, again, you just click where you want the audio recording to go. You would then click on insert if you want to add anything in it's usually on the insert button and then you just click on audio once you click on audio it will then start recording if your device catches up it will then start recording and it records just um, as you would and your child would then speak over the top and once they're finished they would then click stop and then if they want to then rename the um, the file so that your teacher knows what it is. So it could be your story of the Gruffalo. For example, you might want to right click file um, open or on the ellipsis. Uh, when when you're you could just rename it by clicking next to or underneath and just name it the Gruffalo on on um, the iPad, you can actually rename the file. However, it doesn't look like you can in the app on the computer. So there you are. So that will then be helpful for your teacher. And that this is what it will look like if a teacher leaves audio verbal feedback for your child. So then they can just double click and it might say, listen to me. Um, if your child prefers to do it by hand, then again, if you are, um, they've done a piece of writing, you would click where you want the picture to go next to the lesson so that it's not all higgledy piggledy and all over the place. Um, you would just click where you want it to go. So it's a piece of English writing. You would click pictures. And if you've got it on your computer, you'd click from file or you would click from camera. So if you're doing specifically, if your um, laptop's got a camera function, you could do it that way. Or if you're on an iPad, um, or an iPhone, again, you can take a picture from there and just insert it next to it. Um, anything else that you need to know? Oh, videos can only be, so videos can only be up to 50 megabytes. So if you're inserting a video, maybe your child's done some PE, they should really be as short as possible so that it's not over the 50 megabytes. Um, I'm not quite sure. It, again, it depends on quality of camera, etc. Um, so that's insert in a video up to 50 megabytes. If you can't, if, it, if the file's too big, um, we would ask that you just take a screenshot of the video and then insert it in that way. Um, but this is what it would look like for your child for the whole day. So exactly like they would with the sways. And we try and put the links in to the different videos that um, we want in the or the websites that we might be asking children to have a look at. Then when a teacher marks, um, it should sync. So 
just make sure what we found in year five is if this says saved offline, then it won't sync to it. You won't get the work or anything, any markings from a teacher. Um, and your work also won't go to the teacher. So if this says save offline, so you just need to make sure your device is connected to the Internet. Um, sometimes you might need to turn OneNote off and on again, and that's for devices that aren't school devices. That's for every device. We find that shutting OneNote down and open it up, back up again syncs the um, syncs the work. I, if you want to add in anything else, so if your child's done a PowerPoint or anything else, then they can just drag and drop the picture. That's another way you can insert it and it'll say insert as a file or a handout. So you can do PowerPoints um, and we just ask that you insert the file there. I think I've covered everything. I think. Is there any questions? I don't know if there's any questions in the chat. I'm going to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, Dave Wright has a question. You're going to have to unmute yourself, Dave. Hello. Uh, yes, I uh, had a couple of questions. Um, first one. There's um, quite often a big write. Uh, does this uh, mean it's now going to be a big type? Um, so essentially, if if I just show you my screen, that's really helpful, actually. Um, so often your child might be writing extended pieces of writing, and whether that's a big write or or big type or whatever, um, they they might just write more if it if they are doing an extensive piece of writing um, at the moment what we've tended to do is start at the top of where the lesson is um, so where it says English we would start at the top and write down if your child then gets up to you know they filled all of this with their writing and they need some more space but maths is there and you don't want them to go over if you click on the top picture this might be helpful if you click on the top picture and you zoom out or you just scroll all the way down to the bottom and you hold down shift and click on the bottom slide, that will highlight them all. And then you can then move it up or down as you feel is as your child feels appropriate. We've been trialing this in year five and it's worked really well. And it it's just a case of the children getting used to doing it. But that's a way of if you're writing more than um, your slides give you allowance for in that sense, um, you can just move them down just so that you can move the pieces of, pieces of work to fit. I think to, to say, Dave, it's, um, it's also whether it will be a big write or a big type, that will be directed by the teacher. So they'll make sure there's a balance between handwritten pieces and type pieces um, across across okay. the weeks and um, so that that will be directed by the teacher each time. Brilliant, uh, thank you very much. And my other question, um, you said that uh, the teacher will give feedback in green font and then um, pupils will write in purple font their comments. Will there, if I'm on a Tuesday, for example, will there be part of Tuesday's work will be to go back and look at Monday's green font? S it will depend again if I wouldn't it will depend on the nature of the task um, and whether it was a whether it's a if there's lots of children who have lots of sort of editing and things then that might be part of the of the next daily learning um, but in other instances it will be something we'll be encouraging them to do um, perhaps in their afternoon sessions um, and just like they would do in a day-to-day -day kind of school environment we'll be asking them when they can just to have a look often it will be um, spelling corrections things like that brilliant thank you very much no more questions Claire? Claire, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. For risk? 
Yes, thank you. Um, uh, this is Faris's mom. Hello. Hello. Yeah, the problem uh, with us is the internet uh, data is always lagging. So I'm not sure how do we want to do uh, the work uh, concurrently with teachers and students. Um, yeah, so I think two things to say there. Um, one would be something we haven't mentioned actually is initially when we looked at um, sorting the live lessons we had hoped we'd be able to stagger them throughout the day because we're aware many families have many children in the school and that can therefore make it difficult if we're sharing devices and things like that um unfortunately kind of logistically this just didn't look like it was going to work and so there will be overlap between the year groups having them at the same time and um, so what we will be doing is every live lesson will be recorded and then that recording will be posted as soon as the live lesson is finished and um, so you will be able to access all of these lessons as recorded lessons as well um, secondly just in terms of kind of it access and it speed if you are having issues with um, internet connection at your house or a lack of IT devices and um, please do contact the school because we're you know we're trying to get as many devices to people as we can so please do let us know and we'll try and get things sorted for you as quickly as possible so even if um, you're at a position where you might have a device at home but perhaps that's being shared between multiple children then please just make us aware of that because we'll do our best to be able to get you another device so as Hopefully we can get all your children able to access their learning through a device if possible. Oscar. Or oh, Oscar's parent. Anna? Hi, sorry, just one quick one. Um, we've got twin girls in reception, and I'm just thinking logistically with regards to reception and typing on a keyboard is probably not really going to work. So I assume they'll just be writing and then just us upload photos of what they've done. Yeah, absolutely right. I think, um, you know, if they if they want to have a go at typing by all means but i, I completely understand and sympathize and um, so i'm exactly in the same position um at home myself so i would yeah i would get them to um write their write or draw their work however they've been doing it at the moment whatever the task is set and then photograph it and upload it it's just like you were doing before in uploading to dojo um except for this time you'll upload it to OneNote, and the benefit this time will be that those um photos of their learning for that day can then be all in one place rather than having a, a large collection of photos all in the portfolio which don't necessarily have a sort of logical order brilliant thank you um oscar has his hand up yes it's um just to say it would be a case of me trying it out and uh so i can understand it myself rather than screw it up so sorry we can't we can't hear you oh i'm sorry um, uh, uh something's wrong with my microphone okay um can you you, you can uh, can you type it in the chat so the chat is next to the um people at the top um and next to the hand uh, i think the chat is disabled i don't know why i've i've checked and it says that it's enabled <laughs> I did check. Chris, oh. it works through the browser, but not through the app for some reason. Oh, it's <laughs> I don't Microsoft. know why. <laughs> this is uh, where uh, Microsoft are a bit inconsistent. If I change it now, are you able? 
is it, uh, Miss Collins, does that work now for you? I don't know if you're in. Yeah, I've gone into the browser now, so I could, I had it anyway. But it does say that you turned it on <laughs> now. Chris, you're muted. We can't hear you. Claire, you have a question. Yes. Um, we, uh, do we know if there is an option to take pictures uh, to one or directly with the camera of the computer? Because I guess like um, I understand the point of putting that to one note, but uh, it you often takes time to transfer, like taking a picture from a phone and then onto the computer and then onto one note. So do you, are we aware of an option? Because otherwise I think like it's not going to be as life as possible. Um, and, and so the feedback is probably not going to be as quick as possible because parents cannot upload the work as fast as possible, especially if they are working on the side. Yeah, so um, if you're if you've got an iPhone, you can get the OneNote app on your iPhone. You can also get Teams app on your iPhone mm -hmm. um, or a tablet. Um, you can get them. So again, it, you click. I've done a tutorial for an iPad. Um, mm -hmm. You would then just click where you you would tap on the screen where you want yep. your picture to go. You would click Insert and then from Camera, and then you would just take a picture from there. Okay. Yeah. So for I yeah, anything that is uh, not a computer, but you can. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. So if you're if you're working on a laptop, if your child's working on a laptop and you are, um, and they've drawn a picture, for example, or they've been doing something on a laptop, whether it's research, you could screenshot your screen mm -hmm. um, by pressing yeah that's right actually yes yeah. um, print screen and then drag and drop the picture that way wherever yeah. it's saved yeah that's right thank you yeah i forgot about that option thanks <laughs> um claire did you have or ryan ryan's parents um good evening um my question is, shall we be able we to upload um, any evidence of the our children's work for the previous day or from the even previous work, uh, week, for example, because in our case, we are a little bit behind with the material which we cover. So if you upload, uh, am I still on? Yeah. So if you upload um, your work that's relevant to the day, so if, for example, you're working on Tuesday's work, but you're, it's Wednesday, then you would just upload it to Tuesday. What happens in terms of the teachers, um, it then makes it bold for the teachers to say that there's added work. Um, you could also send a message to the class teacher just to say um, we're behind and it, we're, we've now done Tuesday's work um, just to make them aware. We're on day uh, 19 of January at the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much for the information. We will try to start to work on the new week and meanwhile we to work on the previous weeks. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Is there any more questions? No. I'll stop the recording.